Live television broadcasting basically is no different than, than the others, other than the fact that you can't make mistakes. Or if you do make a mistake, you have to carry on. And that's what makes live television uh, A, challenging, and B, uh, to me, an awful lot more fun. Of potentially warmer than average temperature. So it looks like, whoa, I, I am a smurf. With offensive coordinator Tom Clark. Do it live! Do it live! I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live! Okay. There, was my, there was my free speech. Damien, you and I no, are the most. You actually so scared me. I, I didn't realize you were joking, so I was just. I started volunteering at Rogers in 2013. Uh, I did it as a co op placement, actually, just in high school, in my victory lap. I just wanted to see what the TV industry was like, and I've been volunteering here ever since I started there. So I started volunteering um, two years after school, after I graduated Durham. Uh, I took video production for two years. It was a nice program and pretty fun too. But um, I uh, took bro or, uh, this because I wanted to get into broadcasting because I uh, work as a camera operator at Ajax Downs and I just wanted to transition into the uh, industry instead of going back to school. I work for Rogers Television for uh, part-time for 17 years. Uh, it's changed in terms of technology more than anything. The, still, the productions are still very similar. It's just technology has greatly improved things. It's made the cameras much lighter. It's made a lot of the technical stuff much less work. And it gives you a lot more fancy stuff to show people. But the actual production, that hasn't changed. Uh, I've been in the industry almost 50 years. Uh, so basically it's my only job, first job. And hopefully the last job I'll ever have. Um, I enjoy radio and television because it's immediate. Um, I did radio for a long time. Uh, I did flying uh, traffic reports over the city for a long time. That's always great. And then I've been on television now for about five years. So uh, I've had a variety of jobs still at the same employer. But uh, it's, just, it's just a lot of fun to do. I think the biggest change uh, in the industry is the move to digital. Um, everything with analog before was in line. Now we can edit in digital, uh, television and audio, and it's so much easier, so much more precise, but uh, analog has a certain, I don't know, a certain warmth to it. But uh, to me, that is, that is the biggest thing. And of course, the size of the equipment is getting smaller and smaller. You can put a camera on your shoulder, a small little camera, or just hold it up in your hand. A day in the life, uh, well, in uh, studio, I guess. Chaos. I'd say a day in the life in the industry, well, more so in the in-studio part, would be um, you go in, you uh, set up the studio, um, everyone the crew kind of talks about the uh, show. We get a script, just a run-through, broken down to segments and breaks with the topic, and then we just kind of get an idea of um, what's going to happen throughout the show. So I guess in the uh, terms of broadcasting for uh, the crew, um, we'd all meet uh, at the location, the studio here, and then we'd all kind of talk about the show after we set up the studio with the camera angles and everything we want, set up the table, the chairs, the mics, get everything right in positioning and uh, wait for the talent to just kind of slide in there and uh, get ready. But uh, we go through our, um, our show breakdown on the script. We'd also have a, um, uh, it'd be broken down into segments with uh, breaks and the topic for the show of the day. And then we'd go over whether we'd use any graphics or videos or inserts or anything like that throughout the show. We'd do a dry run and then we'd shoot a promo or promotional uh, shot, I guess, for commercials or something along the lines of that. And then um, we just kind of get comfortable and wait for the time to go down and then we'd just go shoot it. Day in the life. Well, I've done everything from, you know, answering phones to producing the show. So if you get into the producing end, which is probably what more people are more interested in, uh, it requires you to, first of all, you come in, you see what's the show about, what's the topic or whatever you've decided on from the week before, getting everything ready. Make sure the guests have got what they're, they need. The scripts are into the teleprompter. Have you got crew? Have you got all these people who are trained? Will the person be able to do that? Is there anything special tonight's show? Are there any certain graphics or anything? Something you need to make sure that people know how to be able to do. Are there any 
guests' names spelled correctly? Are their graphics for their businesses all done and correct? All that sort of stuff has to all be prepared before the crew comes in and starts setting up. So there's all that stuff. And then after the show, if there was anything that needed to be cleaned up, fixed, repaired, you know, in terms of the, the show maybe, because a lot of the live shows are repeated. Um, even the newscasts, CP24, they rerun them. So if there was an error, they, you know, try to fix what they can. Certain things obviously you can't fix, but certain other things you can fix. So you try to fix those things. So in the day of the life, you have the preparedness, the show, and then any kind of after thing you might have to do. Well, a little bit of good news. Uh, we had some earlier problems on the Gardner Express. My function here is uh, doing traffic reports. I uh, collect and uh, all the various cameras that we look at. We have over 300 cameras that we look at on a regular basis, check them out. We have a reciprocal uh, back and forth uh, computer uh, link with uh, 680 News, so we share information. And in, uh, in television, we have to focus on on the visual of it more so than just the audio. And also on television, you have to focus on the fact that people are watching you now at home. Then they leave for work. And so you have to sort of anticipate or tailor your report to your, to your actual audience, whether it's video or audio. I arrive here around 4.30 or so, a little after 4.30, and then I have to prepare for the show, and that includes um, seeing what's happening, if we've had collisions or anything overnight, uh, lanes are blocked, construction, getting an idea of what is actually going on, because if I don't know what's happening, I can't tell the people uh, out there what's going on. So, got to get some equipment up and running and check them all out, make sure they're working properly, uh, do that. Um, get ready for the show basically. I have to go down for makeup, of all things. Um, but yeah, that, that's all part of it. And uh, you know, we talk to people about what's, what's going on, what are we going to leave with, what, what's happening here. Uh, after the show, uh, we have a bit of a break at 9 o'clock. We have a, uh, a production meeting afterwards where we discuss um, what's coming up in the next two or three days. And we just kind of go over what's, uh, what's there, who has to do what. And uh, that discussion is uh, after the show, and it's for the, the following shows. That's really what we do. Without trained professionals, everything goes sour. Uh, live TV is exciting because there's a, that adrenaline rush. You make a mistake, the world sees your mistake. Tape, television, there's no mistakes. If you make a mistake, you redo it until you get it right. So it doesn't have that adrenaline rush that uh, live TV has. So. I really enjoy live TV because of that uh, adrenaline rush. Other advantage of live television is when we're starting at 8 o'clock or 11 o'clock, we're starting at 11 o'clock. When our show's over in the hour, it's over in the hour. When I worked on uh, live to tape stuff, if there was a mistake, equipment failure, or there was something went wrong, we could be there for hours because they wanted to get it absolutely perfect. And so you'd be doing retake after retake. and. It could take a long time to get something that so what seemed to be so simple to get that finished. The difference between live radio and television, uh, radio is more of a one or two person job uh, for what I do, for example. Uh, you can run a radio station with five to ten people, uh, you know, people doing various jobs. Like you've got news, you've got a news director, you've got uh, all the various aspects of a station, depending on the format, all news radio 680, for example, you need a lot of news people. That, that's basically what you need. Uh, information, that's what we get. Um, television, you're looking at information, but with a lot of entertainment in it as well. Um, you don't have as much uh, depth in television. There, there's a lot of things, but you don't have the time because television is expensive. It's very expensive. You need a lot of people, a lot of equipment. Uh, the expense is way more than radio. So radio can be done um, on a reasonable budget. Television costs a lot of money. Live is live. What you see is what you get. So when you're doing a newscast, for instance, that's live. So if on uh, the show the person's dog runs up onto the set, the dog runs on set, you've got to deal with it. Where if you're taping something, uh, whatever show you want to do, a sitcom, whatever thing you're going to be taping, if a dog runs onto the set, 
you stop the tape, you move the dog out, you reset, go back to where you were, and then you start over again and you make it right. One con uh, misconception is that we are all owned by one company. Uh, all the TV stations, all the radio stations, it's all owned by one company. No, it isn't. We have numerous companies that own various things. We are Rogers Broadcasting. We have uh, uh, television with City. We have Omni Television. We have radio stations, KISS FM, CHFI, 680 News. Other state, other companies have other stations. So I think it's, it's the public's perception of what we are. They don't believe we're in a competitive industry. Common misconception about the industry, lots of money, glamorous, and really easy to do. Uh, people, we get the, some volunteers that will come in and think, oh, okay, this is no big deal, I can do this. Yet they can't do it right off the start. They, it takes training, it takes practice to be able to do quality work, just like with anything. And some people come in and think, oh, well, you know, I, I can do this, it's easy. And they don't, uh, they don't do a good job. They don't succeed very well at all. The ones that come in and are eager to learn, those are the ones that, that do well and that do succeed. I, I guess there's the glamour attached with it. You go, oh, you work in television? Yeah. You know, so there's that. It's, it's really cool that people, if you tell them you work in TV, they get excited. You know, it's just like, you know, well, I, I, I clean the streets or I pick up the garbage or something. It's like, yeah, okay. Or, or you work as an auto mechanic. Nah, it's not too great. Uh, even a high school teacher doesn't get it. But you work in TV, people are all, oh, wow, that's... That's so cool. So it's, it's nice to say that you work there. It brings a positive response, usually. I guess my favorite part of this industry is that uh, it's always challenging. It's always different. Same things, but done different ways, uh, different subjects, different topics. Uh, it's constantly changing, uh, challenges you, and it's a lot of fun. I think live television is, is still great. They keep talking about television is, is dying and everything, but uh, really, it's easy to have a look at it. It's not. There's lots of digital stuff out there, no question, streaming and everything else. But live television basically deals with uh, local content. Local content, you can, you can distribute all kinds of digital stuff all around the world. Local content is for the people in that area. They want to know what's going on. They want to know. Um, what's happening in their world, their world.